Hey everybody, Haku here with my first ever read through for The Promised Neverland. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, this is going to be a little bit of an extended intro, I guess, since it's my first time ever talking about this series, ever going into this series. Um, but I'm going in pretty blind here for these read throughs. Uh, this is one that's been on my list of things that you all have requested me to get to for a long while, and I wanted to do something new this week. Uh, so the plan going forward. I'm going to kind of do this video like I did when I first started out Boku no Hero Academia, where chapter one's kind of long, which is normal for the first chapter of any manga. So uh, I'm going to read chapter one here for the first video, and then the next video I do, I'm going to try to do chapters two through five, and then each read through past here, I'll try to do four chapters each. Uh, and what I think I might do, since I'm doing B-Stars right now too, and I'm pretty early on with that, uh, I'm just going to go back and forth. One Wednesday it'll be B-Stars, the next Wednesday it'll be this, the next Wednesday B-Stars again. Go back and forth until we catch up to one of them, and then we'll introduce something new. Or if there's something new that I really want to get to, or that any of you really want me to get to, I can throw something else new into the mix too. Uh, so that's the way I think I'm going to go with this. Uh, but to talk about the series... I've seen it because I follow along with a lot of uh, manga and stuff, of course, for the channel. I've seen this uh, the growing popularity here for this. I see a lot of people that I follow talking about it. Uh, some people whose videos I watch cover it, though I don't watch their videos on it because I haven't read it, of course. Um, it's in Shonen Jump, but it says it's a, like, mystery psychological, so I'm wondering how different it's going to be from a lot of the other Jump comics I read, like uh, Boku no Hero Academia and One Piece. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's about it. I'm really, really excited to start something new, though, so uh, maybe this wasn't as an extended of an intro as I thought it'd be. Kept it to about two minutes. Uh, oh yeah, the past few days I've been kind of sick, and uh, my throat hurts a little still, so um, uh, sorry if my voice isn't as strong as I would hope it to be right now, or if it like if I get if I start getting hoarse or raspy. That's another reason I kind of wanted to do chapter one by itself to save my voice a little bit, and then I can do through uh, do two through four, two through five next time. Uh, so yeah, either way, just saying. And I didn't want to go three days in a row without posting any videos because I haven't been able to get any up the past two days even though I've been working on stuff. Uh, so I at least wanted something for today. So chapter one of something new, it really uh, makes sense. Either way, let's get into actually reading this. We're starting off on chapter one. Oh yeah, and the place where I'm going to be reading for now, I don't know if I'll change it and I'll tell you if I do change it, uh, but for if you want to follow along, the translation I'm going to be reading at least for now is the one that's on Kiss Manga. So uh, yeah, Kiss Manga, again, no manga side I suppose is ideal, but um, I'm going to be using it for read-through purposes at least for uh, right now. So, uh, yeah, either way. And then if I really like the series and stuff, and I, I can go and buy it and everything. Um, but yeah, at least for right now, if you want to follow along, uh, Kiss Manga, because it works really well for read-throughs to do this online, so I can just stare at my computer screen. Either way, I'm rambling on. Jeez, maybe, maybe it did turn into an extended intro. Uh, let's get into it. We have a jump cover here to start off. And uh, this looks like the main characters, I guess, for this. We see One Piece down in the background. Uh, Fine on and Black Clover up at the top right. Moving along, uh, she is, for all intents and purposes, their mother. Though they have no blood relation, they spend most of their waking time together, but they are not siblings. A new series, The Promised Neverland. A normal day filled with the happy little thing, or with the little happy things in life. This is the Gracefield House, an orphanage. Emma, I am an orphan. I'm here, or so I thought. Oh, I thought it was a going to be a male main character. So this is cool. We have a female main character in uh, Jump, which actually, it's kind of rare, isn't it? I can't really think of any other in particular. I'm sure there are. I mean, Nisekoi maybe? I didn't read Nisekoi, so I don't know. Or so I thought. Oh, and we have a big two-page spread. Let me look this over. Okay, that's cool. We see a bunch of the orphans. Is this a series where characters die? Do I need to get attached or not attached to any of these? If so, I kind of like the blue hair and braids uh, girl's design and this white-haired kid. Okay, moving along. Six o'clock sharp. The house's morning starts with the ringing of a bell. The end of a dream, the start of a morning. 
Rise and Shine, I like this art style a lot. I like it's like a very shonen jump, very typical manga art style, which uh, is nice to see because I really like Beastars art style, but the art style is very, very artsy compared to normal manga. Uh, breakfast is calling. I've been living here for 10 years now. Wait, wait up, wait. Oh, for quit goofing around and get dressed. Emma, I can't put on my shoes. Relax, I've got it covered. Don't cry. I can't untie my stupid shoelaces. <laughs> the kid's crying. Morning, and before I knew it, I was the oldest kid around. Good morning, Don, Connie, and of course, to our precious little Bernie. Good morning, Emma. And they're all uh, greeting each other. All right, just in time. As of this moment, we are 38 siblings. Okay. And I noticed in the cover that they had numbers on their necks, so I find it interesting that in this panel or the few here, they all have like shadows covering the neck area. So that's interesting to kind of hide it for now. Oh, never mind, bottom panel, we can see them on the kids. Either way, 38 siblings, tag your it, catch me if you can. You guys have done it now. I'm gonna eat you, and she starts chasing the little kids. Bwah! They're at it again. Our personalities, age, and ethnicities all vary, so yeah, obviously we're not blood related. In spite of this, good morning, and one of the kids is pulling on her mouth. Norman, Ray, and we have two other older kids. Good morning, Emma. Good morning, Emma. Okay, someone's full of energy this morning, and you haven't even had, a, had breakfast yet. What are you, five? I'm eleven, just like you two. I'm just young at heart. How could you be so mean to me, Ray? Emma, I could use a hand here, says another kid with a... Oh no, this is a lady. Okay. This is their mama. Mama, I'll ne I'll do it over again like a grown-up. Wait, hang on, what? I'll do it over again like a grown-up. Why would you? I love that side of you. The five-year-old side of me? No, the side of you that's considerate and mindful of everyone in the family. Thanks. So, basically we're being shown this very, very idealistic uh, life that they have going on. Even though they're orphans, they're all happy, they're all together. So there's going to definitely be some sort of dark undertone, and it's probably going to come from the mom not being trustworthy. In spite of this, I treasure them all. My beloved mother and siblings, who, give a, who gives a crap if we're not blood related, there's nothing I hold more dear, that entire house was my fa- so now we're bringing out was, was my family. They were my everything, and our run of the mill, right on time, ten years, no one thought to question it. Let's dig in. They were indeed ordinary normal days. The plush beds, foods that tasted gourmet, our snow white uniforms, and we see all the numbers. The identification numbers on our necks, and okay, so an Emma is a 63194, and we have the other two characters that are at the front of the cover, so are obviously going to be important to her. 22194 and uh, 81194. So they all have matching numbers. Maybe that's to indicate they're all from the same age group. Maybe that's what year it is. This is set way in a dystopian future or an alternate future. Either way, the litany of daily exams. And their eyes look maddened going through these exams. For our future, for our well-being, Mama said that these tests were to be a substitute for conventional school. Age 11, type 1. Please answer every question within 10 seconds. We will begin now. Question 1. Please select from the fi- er, please select the figure from the following that could not be a possible net solid- net of solid A. And then she selects one. Question 2. Count the total number of cubes in the following composite, so composite solid. Question 3. Give them, er, give the 50th, I was like, soth? What is soth? <laughs> give the 50th term of the following sequence. Question 18. Select the figure that corresponds to the region of the Cartesian plane described by the following inequality. Okay. Question 25. Did I say Cartesian? Should be Cartesian, I believe. <laughs> um, then she's selecting more answers. Question 32. Question 46. Question 59. Please give the formula that can be derived from the following conditions. Question 60. So we're saying that she's 11, but she's kind of 
I don't know if genius is the right word for it, but she's been incredibly trained mentally. Either way, type 2 shall commence shortly. Who we're done. I'm beat. I got about half of them right. Half? That's amazing. You're so good, I didn't even have a clue. It's been like this for a while now. <laughs> this one girl with the rabbit. I'll be returning your scores. Norman, Ray, Emma. Splendid. Splendid job, you three. You each got three hundreds again. Perfect scores. I didn't mind the test, really. Good job. Mama praising me made the whole thing more than worth it. And after each exam, we were left to our own devices and allowed to play to our heart's content. Yikes, Norman, you're it. At least this isn't as outwardly sort of brutal and manipulative as a lot of um, darker anime and manga we've seen have been. Um, how about you, Ray? I'll pass. Shh, would it kill you to come and play with us once in a while? Okay, I'm going to start counting, says Norman. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, most of them chose the woods for cover, huh? Tree climbing, hide and seek, tag. We've been playing these games in this forest since we were little. Okay, so this makes sense that that is somewhat kind of like training too, I guess. And maybe that's why they're left to their own devices out there like that. Either way, that tree with the hole. That rock formation with all the blind spots. The forest, which surrounds the house from all four sides, is the garden that all of us siblings know like the back of our hands. The house's grounds stretch far and wide. But despite all that expansive terrain, there were just two places we were told never to go near. Of course, that's the way it goes. The gate, which leads to the outside world, and the other side of the fence marking the boundaries of the forest. None of us ever really questioned these rules. As long as you lived under this roof, these were the, these were the rules you followed. We're not allowed to go outside. This is why none of us have ever seen the outside world. So I kind of like that they're treated so well and are so happy with their little family together here that that's why none of them have ever sought free. well, that we know of have really sought freedom and tried to go to the outside because it is so idyllic for them. Well, except for that one time when we secretly ventured out to the gate. It was locked, deserted, and pretty much abandoned. Hey, do you want to... Or what do you want to do once you go? Once you get to go outside, no clue. What about you? And we have um, Emma, Norman, and uh, other guy whose name I'm forgetting already. Ray. He's probably since he's the emo one. He's probably the one that's uh, plotting his escape or something. Hell if I know. I want to ride a giraffe. She says, also cute. Good luck with that. <clears throat> I don't think you can open these from this side. Just what on earth are they protecting us from? Do you all understand? The gate... <clears throat> sorry. My voice. Like I said, dying already. The gate and the fence marking the boundaries of the forest are extremely dangerous, so you need to keep your distance. She's clearly full of it. You think so? Shh. Talk about anticlimactic. Let's head back before we get busted. Past these obstacles lies the outside world. I wonder why. The thought of this outside world gives me chills. Really. So far I haven't received a single letter. For many of our siblings that have already departed, I'm sure they've forgotten all about us and are living it up every day. So, I wonder already where they're sending the older ones to. Ugh, I want to hurry up and go outside already. I want to try on all kinds of outfits. Currently stuck wearing the same monotonous uniform. There's a whole lot outside that we don't have inside the house. I want to see trains, says one of the little boys. We knew some stuff about the outside world. Picture books, novels, academic journals. There were countless books available to us in the library. As we looked through those books, the world itself was at our fingertips. All we needed to do was reach out and touch it. What the? You've all been caught already? <laughs> this is what happens when Norman is it. And that, and now that he got done, the last one standing is Emma. Oh, now that he got done, the last one standing is Emma. I was like, is that a typo? Not that that's surprising, but... And he's chasing her. A one-on-one -on -one battle between Norman, Norman and Emma. Let's see. He got me again! And she's uh, laying face down. You managed to avoid capture for ten minutes. Hey, that's a new record. Ah, uh, why? How was Norman so good at this? 
Roman has never been able to outrun me in a foot race, and yet I can't ever win in a game of tag. I've got a question for you. What does Norman have that you don't right now? Huh? And she thinks, plans ahead, composure, super smart. Too many things to count. It's tactics. You're absolutely right that he's no match for you when it comes down to physical abilities, but he always uses his head, so defeating him is never straightforward. Furthermore, tag is a game which allows a tactical approach to shine brightest. How will the target move? How will it attack? You need to observe and analyze the situation, see through and predict the enemy's plans. Then, use all of this to form an even better plan. Think of it as chess, where you use your body to, the, to maximize all the movements on the board. So like I was saying, it is sort of like training. Are you still talking about tag? The kind of game he's playing is chess, to the ver is chess at the very least, and you'd probably be wise to remember that. Isn't that what makes tag so fun, says Norman. See, that's why he's so good at it. And then there's Ray's brilliant tactical mind on top of it all. I dare say Ray has always been more of a strategist than me. Hey, you're giving me too much credit. He sees through and counter, or he sees through and counter the enemy's plan, or see through and counter the enemy's plan. Huh? Geez, I don't know why I was reading key there at the beginning of that sentence. Those three really are something else. Three geniuses of their caliber at once. I hear it's a first in the long history of our house. Ah, that must make Mama so happy. They're a pride and joy. They're crazy smart and agile at the same time. It's real insane. Agreed, says the glasses one. Among them is Norman, the genius with the smartest brain ever. Then you have the only one who can keep up with the said genius, Ray the walking encyclopedia. Finally, there's also Emma, the girl with monster reflexes and an astounding ability to learn. She's always following right behind in the footsteps of those two. Jeez, just what do I have to eat to be like them? You're already eating the same food. Their nervous systems are probably just made of something else. Nervous systems? <laughs> One little kid. So basically, they're monsters. Monsters raised right in this house. But we normal people have a way of fighting too, just watch. Norman, this is revenge. Let's play again. This time, everyone except Norman is it. So petty, they all think. How about that? Petty? No problem. You won't catch me anyway. You've said it or er, you've said it now. I'll make you regret it. I'll make you regret it. Connie, we will catch him by the end of this. Yep. Okay, so Connie is the little rabbit girl. Is this Connie's final day at last? Oh, another one beating us to the punch. Okay, so she's going to be leaving. None of us will live here forever. Before turning 12, all of us are arranged to leave the house and sent out to live with foster parents. Again, that is another rule. This is obviously some kind of experience, uh, exper experiment. So, uh, again, why, why they got to do this to Connie? Connie, are you ready? I'm not sure. My clothes, they suit you perfectly. I'm glad. Thanks. Why they got to do this? Why Connie? Because all I can imagine is something not good happens when you leave. Whether they're being trained to be turned into soldiers of some kind, or being sold off into unsavory circumstances, or whatever it is to be experimented on, hell if I know, whatever it is, I don't trust it. I'll keep giving it my best, even after I leave the house. I'll be fine. After all, I've got my little Bernie with me. You know, little Bernie is a unique one. There's only one of him in this world. Connie, happy sixth birthday. He's a treasure that Mama made specially for me. I'm not that bright, and I'm not so amazing like you guys, but I want to become a mother just like Mama once I'm all grown up. And then, I'll never, er, I'll never ever let go of my kids. Connie, and then Emma hugs her. All of us don't know our real parents' faces, nor where we were born. To us, finding a new family to settle into is a really exciting idea. Take care. But in the end, parting ways still leaves us all feeling sad. We've seen, we've been saying goodbye for ten years. We're eleven years old. The next one might be one of us three. And then <laughs> the rabbit is sitting on the table back inside. Connie, how could you? How is this possible? How can you be so careless right after that heartwarming speech you gave Hal? I suppose she... She was a little on the forgetful side, but this is just nuts. Oh, so now she's going to try to escape to give the rabbit back to her, isn't she? And that's how she's going to find out that this place is sketchy as all hell. Well, what should I do? 
I mean, she already left, says the glasses one. It's too early to say that. And then we have Ray. Just now, I saw some lights turned on over at the gate through the bathroom window. Mama went to see Connie off and hasn't returned yet e either. There's definitely a possibility that she still hasn't left yet. Let's bring it to her, says Norman. Norman. Although, it's probably just better to ask Mama to send it to her later. It'd be best for Connie's sake if we hurry, right? Yep. Oh, God. This is, this is stressing me out. It's no use. The, of course the back door is locked. I guess it's no surprise since Mama is out. It's no problem. A lock like this can be easily opened without a key. There's a trick to it, like a small wire puzzle. So now we're seeing again all the skills they've learned here. He can even um, pick locks and such. Huh, Norman, I wouldn't do this if, the, if circumstances didn't call for it, but right now we have to. And he picks the lock and opens picks the lock and opens it up. We'll just share the blame together later. Okay, so then they run off. They make it to the gate and there's a truck there. Okay, and all these gears and stuff in the ceiling. This is the first we've seen of this kind of technology. Connie? Whoa, a real car. There's nobody inside the car, says Norman. Maybe they'll just, maybe they'll find it if I just put it in the trunk, she says, pulling the curtain back. Then she drops it. Norman? Oh God. And she's dead, of course. I co I knew it. And again, though, A, why'd you have to do this? But B, why are they raising them all like this just to kill them? I guess that's part of the mystery of it. So now they're both obviously shocked. Is someone there? Hey, didn't you hear something just now? You must be imagining things. Yeah, it seems weird. Unless she's not really dead, and there's, like, there's a reason that they saw it like that. But yeah, again, lots of, lot, lots of speculation as I read through this, because it is a mystery. But yeah, because it doesn't make sense to train up super soldiers, essentially, just to kill them off. Or maybe they shipped her out and sent her off because she wasn't a super soldier, because she wasn't smart and really agile like them because she was forgetful and clumsy. Maybe that's why. Either way, must be imagining things. If it were a stray cat, we could have caught it to eat. God, you telling me that you'd even eat cats? So the outside world has gone to hell, we're learning just through this dialogue. And then Emma sees the shadows of the guy's feet. And what the hell? So they talk like normal humans, but those are definitely monsters. What? This is confusing. Monsters have taken over the world and they're using this orphanage to raise the best food? Or maybe they didn't really kill her, they're just turning her into the monster and that's turning her into a monster or whatever and that's what the rose was for? Weird. It makes me wonder if the mom is a monster too. It looks so tasty. And they pick up um, Connie's body. Human flesh is the best after all. When the world is going on, these guys killed Connie. What? They eat humans. They're almost as if they're humanoid. Monsters. Demons. I'm gonna eat you. And then they put her into something. And uh, we see him thinking back to um, the demons in the books he was reading. Demons. Listen. The gate and the fence marking the boundaries of the forest are both extremely dangerous, so you need to keep your distance. Was this what Mama was talking about? Or maybe this place feeds them a kid every once in a while so that they don't attack it? No clue. Mama, is she safe? Fuck. Can't I eat even just the tip of her finger? Says the one monster. You idiot. That kid is valuable merchandise. Nothing the likes you and I should ever dare to eat. The human meat from this farm is all top-of-the-line stuff meant for the rich. Okay, so yeah, it is a human farm. And she is dead then, presumably. And she's being sold off in these monsters, um... Economy. Farm. Human flesh. And then Emma looks at her hand. Meat. I'm not sure. My clothes. Take care. Another one beating us to the punch. What do you want to do once we get outside? No way. We'll be living this whole time just to be eaten. But then again, like I was saying, 
unless there's something special with these monsters, there's no reason to raise them like, um, no reason to raise them to be super smart and agile and all that if the only goal is to sell them to be eaten. So maybe the strong ones get sold to slaves and the weak ones get sold to be eaten because, like I said, there is that difference. I'm just trying to make uh, guesses from what we know so far. Gupna, nearly finished. Six years old again, just the usual. But looks like we'll finally be able to harvest some high-quality goods in the near future. Prepare the three with full scores for their imminent plucking. Yes. So now we see uh, Norman shocked with um, Emma. Understood. The bait's inside. We're counting on you. Worry not, and leave it up to me. So this makes you wonder, too, if the mom is one of those monsters in disguise, if she's a human working for them, if there are more humans just living normally. Again, very interesting. Let's get going, then. Hold on. I smell something. This is very different from the typical Shonen Jump, though. Emma, and they're both running back to the house. Emma trips and falls. Those demons. They're worse than what I could... What I could have ever imagined. Everyone. The foster children. Farm. Shipping. The kind mama we all know. Is the real mama, right? The kid in that trunk. That, that wasn't Connie, right? So now they're no learning that everyone they've ever known and seen off has been killed and eaten. That was Connie, all right, says Norman. And then she breaks down. Welcome back. How was it, says Ray. We didn't make it in time, says Norman. Empty-handed, he thinks. And then the uh, rabbit is laying around. Found this dropped under the car, says the one. Dispose of it. A, sing a single fact can overturn your entire conception of reality. This is a farm. I am food. Let's run away, Emma. We've got to leave this place behind, says Norman. I don't know what the outside world is like, but... We have no other choice if we want to survive. It'll be fine. We'll manage to run away. If it's you, me, and Ray, we'll definitely... Do you think it's possible to take them with us? Says Emma. If we leave them here, they'll all end up like that, without a doubt. We can't just leave them behind. I don't want any more of my siblings to die. It's possible. It'll be fine. We'll successfully break out of here with everyone else. Norman reassuringly smiled, because I was crying. I won't cry anymore. There are no adults we can trust. How are we going to run from those monsters? It's tactics. Think. It's the same as the game of tag. We have to find a way for us all to survive. Chapter 1 End. That was very, very good. And one thing that I really like about it is that, of course, there's like the whole what is what would it be like if the humans were the cattle or whatever sort of thing that we've seen before in other series. But um, I like that they were raised kind of to be the best product or whatever, but it does, unless there's something special with the demons that them being smarter makes them better to eat. Um, unless there's something like that to do with the demons, there's no real reason to try to train them to be essential super soldiers, really. Um, so there's probably more I could notice if I went back through and really studied what all went on in all the panels and stuff. Because um, it seems like a lot of things are probably hints for the future that we won't know until that future gets here. So, yeah, I like I like the mystery aspects of it. So they basically trained them to be super soldiers that can escape from them now. And uh, that's how they're going to be going through their escaping. And it also makes me wonder, is this going to be the kind of series where we have a ton of character deaths? Because it kind of seems set up to be that way. Or is it the kind of one where we have one at the beginning and we probably won't get another for a while. Um, so yeah. Either way, I'm sure it's going to be written very well. That was a really, really good opening chapter. Because it just leaves you thinking a lot. Uh, but yeah, like I said, in two weeks, Wednesday after next, I'll uh, go through chapters two through five. Going to be a hard two-week wait. But uh, yeah, either way, it is what it is. So uh, I had a ton of fun with that. That was really, really good. Um, so, yeah, like if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of this chapter, what you thought of my first awesome reaction. Please no spoilers for the future of the series, um, because I guess that would kind of suck. Um, 
follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. Subscribe for more of this and a ton of other manga. Uh, I already cover One Piece and Boku no Hero Academia every single week, so there are those. Uh, there are a couple monthly manga we cover, like Elf Samu, Yasara, and I. Uh, and then some anime and stuff, too. Uh, and some web comics like Tower of God. Either way, yeah, sub for any of that. Follow on Twitter, I think I already said. If you want to link to our Discord server, though, to talk to me or more of us there, then just ask and I can give you a link to that, too. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.